Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here, and here happens to be in my garage where I continue to mess around with the ShopSmith Model 510, which is new to me, but, but not a new machine. Uh, the previous owner, it appears, didn't get it fully set up. Almost every adjustment that should have been checked <laughs> isn't right. So um, as I'm continuing to mess around with this, the, uh, the thought occurred to me that there's something that I use very regularly with my, uh, my first ShopSmith Mark V, the one I bought in 1987 that's over in my shop. Um, and that is something that just makes my life super easy. Now you hear people talk about, oh, what a pain changeovers are and things like that. Well, one of the things that can help that is this simple little device right here. The ShopSmith calls this a, a stop collar, but they're commercially available as shaft collars. And uh, this one in particular is an inch and a quarter ID. Uh, from that point, it doesn't matter if it's taller, if it's thicker or thinner, as long as it just gets the job done, that's what, what matters to me. Now, let me show you some of the places on this machine that are not typical, but that I use these stop collars all the time. So one of the first places I think to put a stop collar is right here on this uh, shaft on the tool rest. Now, by the way, this is in bad shape. I'm going to have to wire brush that. Um, but what I'm going to do is I would put this up here and, uh, and lock it in place where it's out of place. And then the next time I need to drop this into uh, a particular location, I'll bring this down and tighten that set screw down on one of the flats that are adjacent to the, uh, the rack that you see here. And so that way, when we put this in place, it'll automatically drop down to that height, whatever that height is. Now, this is such a common thing that if you look at any ShopSmith presentation here on YouTube, when they get to the lathe, you'll see them pull the tool rest up and it'll always have the stop collar on it. In a similar manner, I always like to put one here on the tubes that support the main table. And I will put that stop collar stored up near the top. Now, why would you want this? Well, you could use this for any repetitive cut that you're going to make. Uh, if you know you're going to go back and forth between the drill press and, uh, 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 and the table saw, and you want to be able to drop down to the same depth, maybe for a dado, for example, uh, we can easily, whenever we need it, we can just drop that stop collar down and lock it in place. Now, there are no flats on this one. Uh, and so just as a rule, I always will lock that oops, over here on the opposite side where I can easily get to it. And again, anytime I need to take the table out, do some other operation, maybe turn on the lathe, I can always bring it right back and it'll drop down to the exact same height. Speaking of dados, uh, it's also possible to use two of these. Oh, by the way, for uh, setting the depth of something. Uh, if you make a cut and then you want to make sure that you change the depth a little bit and make it a little bit deeper like a dado, uh, with this locked in place, we can loosen this and measure the distance or even put something in here, a spacer, that measures the distance that we want, quarter inch or so. And then when we drop that down, that is the same as extending the blade another quarter inch. Uh, but again, speaking of dados, I can also add one of these collars to the bottom side of the carriage, and I can raise and lower this with a stop at both the high end and the low end. Now here's another handy spot for a stop collar. I can put that here on the tubes that support my extension table. And then for my repetitive cuts where I have a, a stop collar set up on the main table, I can have it right there. And that would automatically drop it down to the same height as the main table. Maybe you have this set up for ripping three quarter inch plywood or something like that. All right, so you might be asking yourself, where can you get those amazing stop collars? <laughs> Well, uh, you can actually buy these commercially. Uh, here's one I picked up on Amazon. Um, problem I had with this one, though, is it's uh, the size of the set screw here is not the standard ShopSmith 532nd. It's too large. So that's not convenient for me. 
Um, also, you have to pay attention to make sure that it's not threaded on the inside dimension. There are also versions of these that are two-piece, meaning they've split it completely in half, and you've got two uh, machine screws that hold that in place. Not a bad idea if you're in a spot that's prone to be uh, damaged by the set screw. It'll just clamp right on. Uh, but probably the best place to get them, well, the very first one that you're going to need, you just steal right here off of your tailstock. Your Shopsmith tailstock came with two of these, and they're designed to drop the tailstock in to the proper height. Well, once one has stopped it, that's, <laughs> that's all that's needed. So the one that I usually put on my tool rest is, the, is one of the ones I steal right here off the tailstock. Again, this is an old Shopsmith demonstrator trick. If you look at those same YouTube videos of the guys that have the stop collar on their tool rest, you'll notice there's only one of them on their tailstock. Uh, anyway, you can get these uh, from Shopsmith. You can get them used on eBay. You can get a version of them on Amazon. I'll throw a couple links down below, but uh, that's it for me. All right, make it a great day. Talk to you again soon.